Good afternoon, again. Um, this is the hardest part of the day. This is the part of the day when everyone is feeling sleepy, everyone's just had lunch, it's hard to concentrate. Um, but we do have a lot of variety this afternoon, a lot of different, uh, different subjects, different projects to talk about. So I hope it will be uh, bearable to do this. Um, please try not to snore if you do. <laughs> <laughs> I asked for sofas, but uh, nobody, nobody had the budget for sofas. So the, the chairs aren't very comfortable, there are no pillows. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, my name is Nick Carney. I, um, I have been asked to chair this particular track of the, of the conference because I'm a, a worker as an evaluator on, on European funded projects. I do this work both for the European Commission and I do it for Project Consortia. And so I've had the uh, dubious privilege of, of getting to know an awful lot of projects over the years since uh, I've been doing this since about 2002 and I've seen quite a lot of projects in this uh, time. Um, and I will be talking about some projects today myself because the people who are running those projects weren't able to be here today for different reasons. Um, so, European projects. Did... Oh, sorry. That was you, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of this track, if uh, I can find out, there I was. The idea of this track is to provide a space for these uh, projects funded by the European uh, Union in the field of education, obviously because of the subject of the team conference, to present their work and to discuss its implications. Very often in these projects you aren't at the stage of maturity to be able to produce a fully fledged article, but you have produced a, a 70 page proposal and you've done a set of work and you have things to share, things to talk about interesting ideas, innovations, etc. that are underway and it's useful to be able to discuss these at different stages of the project rather than only when you've finished all the work and you can write an open paper and present it to a conference. So that was one of the reasons, along the same lines as the doctoral uh, uh, chair track in the conference, of providing spaces for, shall we say, work in progress. And that's what a lot of these, uh, these projects are. Um, obviously, as these projects are work in progress, most of them have been running for <coughs> more than a year. Some of them started about nine months ago, others started maybe a year ago, and there are some that have been going for two years or more. Um, in the whole realm of, of uh, EU-funded innovation in education, there are there is a moment right now, this year, of, of radical change, because we've just changed from the, the period of the, we get some oil to that door, um, from 2007 to 2013 was one period with one set of programs which has just changed and everybody is a little uncertain about what is happening now. We've had one round of, uh, of calls for funding, but uh, it's still unclear what the priorities are in a lot of cases. But most of these projects that we'll be seeing today come either from the SEVEN framework, or FP7 as it's, as it's called, which was the main research program over the last six years, or they come from the Lifelong Learning program, which I'm sure uh, some of you know, which had basically eight different lines. There were the, the lines that were to do with different educational sectors, <coughs> Run big for adults, Erasmus for... Come on in and sit down, otherwise you're, you're going to have a, a little blockage up there by the door. Um, Run big was for adults, Erasmus was for higher education and universities, Leonardo was for vocational training, Comenius was for schools, and then they had four transversal lines which had to do with policies, with language learning, with the use of ICT, and with the dissemination and valorization of projects that have already been funded. That was what was happening up to last year. So many of the projects that we'll be seeing today were funded from, that, from those programs. Now, the European Commission, uh, well, 
sorry, I forgot to say, under the same framework, there are certain types of projects. Basically, the two main types are the, the STREP, which is a strategic targeted research and innovation project, or the IP, which is an integrating project. STREPs were budgets of between one and three million, usually, and IPs usually were between two and 12 million. The largest ones are 10, 11, 12 million. A lot of them, however, are smaller with budgets around 5 million, 6 million over a period of three or four years. So these are, these are quite large projects compared to these ones, which mostly had a maximum budget of half a million euros. So we're talking a different, and usually with two or three years and no more. Um, this has now changed. The uh, seventh framework program has been replaced by Horizon 2020, um, which is the flagship research funding program of the European Commission, and has in fact left out education. There is no section of the program that deals with education. There are sections that deal with health, there are sections that deal with energy, there are sex sections that deal with uh, ICT, there are sections that deal with uh, security, but there is no specific section that deals with education, though there are a lot of calls spread out through the programme that talk about learning and education as objectives, particularly the ones relating to society. But the panorama has changed quite uh, substantially from uh, the focus in that um, Erasmus Plus has also changed in the sense that instead of having sectoral programs, there are just types of project, which include, oh, there's a type over here, strategic partnerships, mobility projects, knowledge alliances, and sector alliances. Um, the strategic partnerships are anything between about 40,000 euros and 400,000 euros. Um, the mobility projects are, uh, can be very small or reach up to uh, about 200,000, but they tend to be the smaller organisations, um, just to send people back and forth across Europe, which appears to be the thing that the European Commission is most proud of in education. It seems to work. Sending kids from one school to another school, or sending teachers from one school to another school, really makes a change. Where I live in Somerset, in England, in the primary school, um, they never travelled with their kids at all. And they organised a, a, a journey that went simply to Denmark to spend a couple of days in a Danish primary school. And it was quite shocking for the, for the teachers particularly, because in British primary schools, one of the things, for example, that you do when you're a child is when you want to speak, you raise your hand. And just that little detail, going to a Danish primary school and seeing a much more anarchic or perhaps democratic way of doing things was quite a change for the teachers from the English primary school because they never imagined that could be possible, that you could actually have 20 kids who would just speak when it was their turn without having to wait with their hands up, which seems rather sort of limiting. And that just things like that make enormous changes. They open up the possibilities. And because of this, a lot of the funding has been concentrated towards mobility now, as opposed towards research and, uh, and innovation. There is a change going on there. However, they, those ones have that limitation budget. The knowledge and sector alliances are larger uh, projects that reach uh, a million euros, um, which are aimed to bring into contact educational, particularly higher education, and business or the public sector or organisations that are not in education. The idea of being to focus development out into society rather than having stuff that just stays within the academic sphere. Okay. So those are quite important changes. I'm just sort of giving a brief idea of them because if we do this next year, most of the projects you will see belong to this uh, change panorama, but uh, there are still obviously for projects that are funded in 2012, 2013, they still have a way to go. And so we'll be, uh, we'll be looking at them. But the idea today is just to see what kinds of innovations people are, are putting into practice, trying to implement, 
using uh, European funding, which is, of course, by taxes. So in this, section today, in this session today, we'll be hearing people talk about roughly 14 projects. It may be slightly fewer because there's somebody on the way from Barcelona, and I don't know if he's going to arrive. But in theory, it's 14 projects we'll be looking at. And there are, there are a few more that um, haven't been able to come. And they said they would send me uh, PowerPoint presentations to show you, but they haven't managed to do it. So I will, if we have time, I will talk very briefly about them using their websites. But uh, only if we have time. I figure they, they haven't done their homework. <laughs> they get to be last. But um, without further ado, I don't want to talk anymore. I want other people to talk. So the first presentation 